Hey everybody, what is happening in your world? Well, it is Saturday and it's almost, it's after dark. I don't even know standard mountain Pacific time. But most of my day was spent hobnobbing out in the community at the Agua Dulce Women's Club Parade of Tables. What's that? It's a parade with tables. And it was so huge, it's in a airport hangar. And they take like all this silverware and fine chinette or whatever. And it's so nice that I think Mrs. Olson would, co would covet it, excuse me, rented lips. Anyway, I got to spend time with Society's Finest in Agua Dulce, California. That's right, cultural capital of the world. So, hey, thank you. Agua Dulce Women's Club for making me a better human being. Okay, back to reality. What are we doing today? Well, we are working on this K model, K150 from the 1950s. Hey, we're going to do an episode because it's getting on Christmas. That's why we had the parade of tables. We're going to do an episode about baby boomer Christmas guitars. You're going to love it. You might even see this one or uh, a zillion other ones like it. Anyway, you've seen this one in an episode before we kicked off something called in the episode series A Minute with Fred, Fred Wallachy. Um, I'm going to give you a link to that up there. We talked about what this guitar is and when it was made and all that kind of thing and what's on it. And um, I did a bits and pieces episode about my Thanksgiving weekend and all the fabulous and utterly and completely disamazing places that I visited link up there and you saw a little bit more about this here so what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to get down to putting this on the workstation and I'm going to show you actually how to pull the binding out of here because there's some things you need to be concerned about for example did you know that there is an outer binding and sometimes layers of purfling and those each have their own separate channels that are routed in that you bind them their own channels like I got this to protect my respiratory system when I'm doing work on my channel right anyway in all seriousness there's no easier way to screw up a good guitar than doing a binding job. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about taking the hardware off, what to do when it's brittle, how not to burn up the edges with a heat gun. Do you know that a heat gun can be used as a blow dryer? What do you think this Aquanet Elvis flip just happens? Did you? Really? Anyway, I'm going to show you some things I've learned the hard way while we strip the binding off of this and get it ready to ship back to Fred. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. Did you know that sometimes old guitars, the hide glue that they put them together with is so degraded that the only thing putting or keeping the guitar together is the binding. And sometimes when you strip the binding off and then you errantly drop the guitar, did you know the top, the bottom, or both could fall right off? We're going to be looking at this kind of thing while I chatter on when we finally get to the bench, which requires me to stop talking, let's go. <laughs> I lied. Um, there is one more thing that I want to tell you before you hit the bench. This celluloid binding is terrible. It gets in your lungs. It never goes away. It can make you really sick. So forget the Chanel jokes. Let me tell you a practical thing. Do you have a piece of newspaper around? Hey, I do. I have a couple. So what you should do is when you get your stand set up that you're going to work, wherever you're going to work on this, open up a piece of newspaper. Have you ever seen this stuff? It's craft adhesive. It's just glue. If you spray the newspaper with it and coat it good and put it underneath where you're working, anything that falls to it will stick. This stuff is usually made for scrapbooking and that kind of thing or mounting pictures or whatever. Now, 
you want to use a piece of newspaper that's not important to you. You wouldn't want to use a piece of newspaper, for example, that has a story about Jimmy DeQuisto and a complete listing of all the serial number guitars he ever did and what that means. Do not covet this. I'll pray for you. Let's get to the bench now. This time it's for real. Guys, this is nasty, nasty stuff. You don't want to breathe it. You want... Let me show you something very interesting. I had these made for my channel. Anyway, in all seriousness, protect yourself when you're using this stuff because it flakes off. It gets in your lungs. I don't want to say it's asbestos, but I won't say it's not. I want to show you this. I've shown you this before. This tape holder is awesome for doing binding jobs and whatever, but... Part of the trick here is we're going to go around and we're going to make sure that we put tape, and this is a pain, and some of this tape doesn't want to bend very well. So you're going to go around everywhere where you are going to work next to the body of the guitar and give yourself a differentiation line. Now, several tools you want to have. These little cutters are great. Once you get that line cut, you can start scoring this along here very slightly like this. Violin maker's knives are the best for scraping stuff away. You can edge binding with them. But one of the best tools is this file that I got from Stumac. And once you get binding out or close to it, you go along and work the channel because getting your channel in the right spot is going to make all the difference in how the binding looks when it goes back in. Another little tricky binding job tool is actually a piece of binding on a screw. The screw doesn't go all the way through the binding, but... You'll know what kind of binding you're going to put on it. You're going to get a piece of it. And then you use this as a gauge once you're, you've got the binding out and you're doing your filing because if this fits, your binding job will go good. Now, the easiest way to do this stuff and the quickest way to get in trouble simultaneously is to use a heat gun. Now, if I put my finger up here while I heat this up, my finger will get hot and want to burn before the wood finish underneath does. If you go to heating this up too much and you're using the wrong kind of tape, it will actually pull the old finish off of the guitar. Um, when you're working on fine guitars, you really don't want to do that. But a heat gun can be your friend. You just heat this stuff up. It gets a little malleable instead of being all crumbly. And then when you cut it, it will... Try to come off in manageable pieces if you scored everything like so. Notice, just put your thumb along the guide, score it, heat it up a little bit, flake it out. Keep control of this thing, this stuff, and don't forget, protect your respiratory system. This stuff is nasty. Um, we are going to end up taking off uh, the tailpiece. There's probably a wire underneath there that grounds everything. We want to make sure that that's okay. But we're going to take off anything that's in the way here, including this control panel up here that's a little bit shaky, the condition of it. I think it's going to need to be reinforced, but we'll take all that off. I'll do an episode on this to kind of show you, and we'll fill in uh, a bit of the big video on how this is restored that Fred and I are doing with the different steps we're taking. Okay, guys, here is the sticky newspaper, and I've placed it right below where everything can fall on it and stick to it, and you know that I'm going to put my sleeve in it like gravy, and it will stick to it, and that'll be that. So the first thing we really want to do here, um, now that you've had the general overview in the last part there, is get a little bit deeper into it. I've uh, done an episode where is my pointer 
about how to get ready and arrange for a project and I talked about these canvas bags and a flash drive and a notebook and there is a link to it right up there right about now. Invest in the stuff because especially if you've got a couple projects going on, if you've got everything in a bag with a label and a notebook about what you've done, what you're going to do, and especially if you have ideas about junk piling things and using matchbooks and stuff, you can put the inventory in there. But the first thing that we need to look at is to get this stuff off of the guitar. Now, these uh, Ziploc bags uh, are the best to put stuff in. And we're going to start by loosening the strings up, which we've already done. The bridge is ready to come off. We do not want to lose this bridge. This is an original bridge, and there's nothing like looking for an original bridge, especially if you start getting into Bakelite bridges. So I'm going to want to take the tailpiece off. So we're going to take the strings really loose. I'm going to wind those up and keep them because who knows, somebody may want them. Don't just assume that because you don't want it, that somebody else wouldn't, right? There is a ton of rust on this guitar. Of course, I could have used my fancy Milwaukee winder thing, and I think I should have done that. But anyway, let's go ahead and waste valuable production time. But yeah, these are actually rusted too here, so we'll worry about that in a minute. Let me go ahead and get these off. I like the money I put into this. I've given you a link to this, I think, a hundred times before the setup. I think I'll do it again down there in the resources section. But this will take off Grover Imperials, bass tuners, and whatever, and it's padded. When you start working on these old guitars with these Butterbean tuners, you may find yourself in a spot where you are breaking the tuner. So having this thing padded is a great thing. Trust me. All right, when I took the strings loose, the nut came right off, as did the remnant of a little spacer that was underneath it. Check that out. I don't know what that is, but... Who knows, if the guitar was set up just perfectly, it needed that spacer. So we're going to put all that in the bag. If I can get the bag open, there we go. Now, I've told you about this fancy tape dispenser. It's great for binding jobs and masking this thing. You always want to have one of these handy when you're doing this kind of stuff. Because the minute I pull up this floating bridge, I'm going to want to put a piece of tape on the bottom so it's not flipping around the tailpiece and scratching up everything. This is one of those bridges that it doesn't just sit down and you have to pull the strings all the way through. And sometimes the winding is going to hurt you with that. But... Try to be patient. See, I would be putting scratches in the top of the guitar if I wasn't taping this off already, doing something as simple as this. Again, I'm going to wind these up and keep them. They may be important to somebody, especially if this was their father or grandfather's guitar. You know what I mean? All right, four strings wound up and in the bag with the rest of the parts. While I'm doing this, we are going to pull the trapeze tailpiece now. Um, these are flat-headed screws, um, not Phillips, so this tells you it's old stuff. I got this little nut driver. You want to make sure you're going the right way so you don't strip everything out. Now, when we take these off, this workstation has a nice little tray with a magnet in it, but when we take these off, there's going to be a wire under here because there's electronics on this guitar and they always grounded 
the system to the tailpiece. That way the strings were grounded and you didn't get that buzz. Let's get the rest of these two off here. But what's going to happen here is we're going to be looking for that wire and we don't want it to go back into the body. So we want to be ready with a piece of tape or one of these clips or something to trap it. And this glue paper is starting to freak me out right now, but it will come in handy in a little bit. Let's turn the volume down now. All right, we're the first people to look at this probably since it came out of the cave factory. What's under there? Is there a wire? Oh no, there is no wire. Figure that out. Kind of interesting up here. It looks like there may have been a wire right there, but in the bindings all busted up. So there is no wire. Now, while I'm here, I want to tell you that what I usually do when I run across something like this is rather than depend on these screws to hold, I will put some tight bond on a toothpick and fill those holes up even if I'm going to use the same ones because then there will be new wood for it to grab to. So think about that. Um, let's get this off of here now. It grabbed up the tape I had that I was talking about. You see there's fine dust right there. Can you see that? You don't want that. You really don't want to breathe that for sure. Okay, love this workstation because you can rotate it. Um, I have pulled some of the binding off of here already, and I want you to notice a couple of things here. There is a channel right here for the binding, and then there is what we're calling purfling. There's a difference between binding and purfling. They each have their own channel. You can see that there's some what appears to be binding left right here, even though I have the old binding off, remember this little tool I talked about? I have the old binding off, but that purfling is there. And so there's this channel that fits that that comes down to the bottom of the purfling and there. So again, you want to remember when you're pulling stuff off, I would prefer to assess the purfling and ask yourself, does it need to be replaced? Fred will tell me, why would you put something new over something old just replace the whole thing but when you start getting crazy and cutting this all out at the same time and not pay attention to what you're doing to the binding when you're filing it remember with your your uh, file that I showed you you want to do these separately and you want to protect everything so we're going to take some tape and we're going to put it wherever we're going to remove binding, like so. And then I think we're going to fire up the heat gun for a minute. And I'm going to show you another little trick that you can use. And I've talked to you about scrapers and how you can use scrapers on wood. Well, they come out uh, in another handy way. And let me show you what that is. So let's say I'm going to run a heat gun on this. Um, I can use one of these scrapers that has this rounded French curve type shape and come on here and just work a small section at a time and remove it. Anything that will give you and the finish of the guitar protection against the heat gun is going to be good. So you want to spend the time ahead of time putting on your tape where you need it. So you can keep ahead of yourself. Now, I said something about putting your finger up there ahead of the heat gun so you can feel the heat on your finger. If your finger is burning, skin is more sensitive than wood, believe me. And so if you feel the heat, you can stop. The last thing you want to do is just work this and turn it into powder because that's where the inhalation problem comes from. So I showed you before, I like these little uh, little box cutters. You can go along and set them in this groove like this 
and score this just a little bit as you go. Use your finger as a guide. Don't let it get down into the wood, but you just come along like that and score this like so. Now this binding is coming loose, so it wants to fall off by itself. You're going to do the same way. Don't get yourself in a bind working opposite of the way you usually would. Um, again, I'm noticing that this purfling section is wanting to stick on by itself. That's where the term Klingon came from. It doesn't mean Star Trek or your X. It means binding that wants to cling on. How'd you like that? Um, again, everything is hopefully falling down onto the glue and holding. But if I take the heat gun and heat this up a little bit, I'm going to do this, I think, where there's a heat setting on this. I don't want to start off at 6 and 7. I want to start off here. I just want to make this stuff a little malleable, heat it up. And again, I'm going to put my finger here so I can feel what the heat is doing. So I'm going to kill the volume and then we're going to heat this thing up a little bit. Okay, once it's heated up a little bit, and come along and it's going to want to come off a little bit better and better manageable pieces if everything goes right. If it's too far gone, that may not always happen. But you get as much of the big pieces you, as you can out without scraping down into the guitar. This takes patience. If you're all stressed out and you want a way to de-stress and you think this isn't the way to do it, this will teach you patience. Remember, it's only somebody's priceless guitar that you're working with. Now, as you go along, get a section done. Again, look, the purfling is staying there. I just take this, and this seats down in this edge here. And I just come along and work this area like so until I start seeing wood. Now, I warned you before, pay attention. When you're going along here, if all of a sudden this starts cutting loose, you want to stop. You don't want to get the whole top uh, out of place and have it fallen off. Now let's say that I noticed that the top was starting to separate here from the sides. I would stop. I would warm up my hide glue. I would put a little wedge in there, I would separate it, I would br brush hide glue in there, and then I would use my spool clamps and put everything back together in one section before moving on to the other part. These are handy. I think I did an episode where I showed you how to make spool clamps. It's right up there right about now. Anyway, let's get back to the tedious part of removing this binding. You can see that I've done this side. Everything is fine except for the purfling. I'm going to do a little bit more and then show you the purfling removal and kind of assess where we are at on the top before we move along. Again, you want to get one section done, nice and clean. See if the top is separating. Don't pull everything only to discover all of a sudden you bump it and everything cuts loose. And don't forget, if, you're if you start having some trouble, remember these things get dull, they snap off. Be careful where you put these after you snap off a section. But you can come in with a new section. And, and also remember, the more of this you have out, the harder it is to control. So keep it close. Keep the blade locked. You know, these things have a lock like that. You see that? You don't want this floating around because when you start getting things loose, you cut your finger. Worse yet, you cut the guitar. So I'm just going along like so and scoring it. Now, if you run into a part where you're having a little problem, a little quarter inch chisel where you're using your finger as a guide. If you're worried about cutting your finger before you cut the binding, that's probably a good thing, but quarter inch chisels. This is tedious, tedious work.
yeah, there's going to be some times where it'll just pop right off. You're going to wish you hadn't heated it up, but protect your health, and then you're just going to go along very patiently and get... You'll notice that there is no file surface on either side of this, so we'll float an edge so you're not digging down. You don't want to take a bunch of wood off. You just want to come along and make sure everything is fine. Keep good control and do this. But ultimately, what you want is you want to make sure that that binding guide that you have fits right down in here all the way around. Like so, a longer piece of binding. Just wrap it around, see if you got any gaps. And that will tell you how to do this. The purfling is actually, the Klingon purfling is actually helping us here. If you look, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this. And then we will take a look at how to separate this layer of purfling and get everything just right. Again, making sure that the top is not ready to come off in one piece. All right, I think I'm zoomed in enough here and I've got enough of this um, filed away here for you to see. This is nice and smooth here. We got away without scarring up the sides. And I've started to remove the purfling and you can tell here that this purfling channel is very very thin and small so when I come in here I want to be concerned that I'm not cutting wood because then I'm making the purfling channel deeper so I'm just coming along the edge here and what I found works the best sometimes is I want to find the bottom of the channel and you can use your little chisel here like so. But you can tell that channel is part of a millimeter deep. This is very delicate work. You see right there, the drop down is only that much. Again, this is tedious, tedious work. Okay, guys, so if you're going to go to a luthier and you're going to say, hey, I want you to do the binding and I want you to do the purfling. I want you to notice that I've taken a good five minutes on basically what's about four inches of this purfling channel where the other stuff came out. Now, a luthier may tell you, hey, you know what? We can put we can put some uh, binding in here and put some CA glue on or a little bit of acetone and have it meld to each other but again just depends on what you want you gotta ask yourself what are you paying the luthier for don't you think it's been easier for them to do setups on new guitars and stuff like that rather than to come in here and just ask yourself kind of familiarize yourself what is the luthier going to do on your guitar and what do you think is reasonable don't find out later that I always tell people about neck resets. If you've got a guitar that you paid $200 for that's going to be worth $400 with a good neck, and you pay $500 for a neck reset, it's not the luthier's fault if you don't know how to make good decisions. You know what I mean? So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Got a lot, a lot of work ahead of me, and I'm going to show you one more thing before I leave here. Okay, I want to take a look at this right here. This control um, panel or plaque or whatever you want to call it is made out of the same stuff as the pit guard that gassed off a long time ago. Um, and, and so what's going to happen here is the minute that I take these screws out, they're all rusty, uh, they're flatheads, this thing is going to disintegrate. I can see it's cracked there, uh, there, and there. So let's take a look at a little trick that we can do 
before we start with anything, I'm going to take some of this tape out of our dispenser and I'm going to kind of put it like so. Okay. It really doesn't matter where it is on the outside. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is get where I get the edges of this thing defined. You'll see here in a minute. Because I can take a piece of scrap metal, I can take a piece of veneer wood, or something like that, and once I've got this thing covered up, ideally I would have done this after I took the screws out, and you'll see why here in a minute. But, I can take all this tape that I've put together now, and I can take a pencil, and I can run across the edge of this, like so. If it starts to get a little thin on you, you can just put another piece of tape on it. But you're basically making a form that once your knobs come off, you just peel this up and cut it out and you have the shape that you need to either make a new piece or a piece that you can put under this one and just bond the pieces to and epoxy over the top and stabilize them. So, back to the binding, this tedious part of the binding here and then the purfling, and then we will be getting this back to Fred. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. I still got quite a bit to do. You can see uh, that the binding was coming off pretty easy, but the purfling is kind of hanging in there. And to Fred's point, if you take something that was in the 50s, early 50s, 50 and 50 is 100, and then add on another almost 25 years, so you're dealing with something that's 75 years old and you take off one piece and, and put new stuff on and, and kind of leave something in there. So I'm going to trust his judgment, thing, but I'll tell you what, taking that purfling off and getting that channel that it sits in, you want to pay attention to. I would not do this job uh, for pay had I not done it before. Um, if you are somebody that has no patience, this isn't something for you unless you want to learn patience and then buy a guitar and do it yourself and kind of learn. Again, if you hover your uh, mouse up there, there's going to be some eyes popping up. And at the end of the episode with my contact information, I'll throw a playlist on there about doing binding. We're going to catch up with this guitar as we go along. I will keep you posted. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate you giving me a like and subscribing. If you haven't, I will see you soon. I'm going to get back to doing binding. It's way cheaper than a therapist. See you soon.